uh, welcome friends my name is avinash gorakshakar and i welcome all of you to another uh, interesting episode of face to face corporate series friends in these uh, face to face corporate series initiatives we uh, you know talk to emerging uh, companies from emerging sectors and uh, you know we talk to the promoters so that all of us can get a sense of their business better and today friends we have got a very interesting company which operates in the telecom space the company's name is sai sar tele ventures limited and we have the privilege of having the top management team mr rahul sajdeva who is the managing director rahul ji uh, thank you very much for sparing your valuable time with us today i'm pretty sure that you know we'll be able to understand your company's operations better right thank you thank you for having me here so rahul ji uh, first question which is very elementary uh, if you could you know tell us uh, what is the kind of business model which our company operates you know which will help our viewers understand your company's operations better and if you could also share in a small way your business journey you know how did you start this company and what is the current positioning of sar uh, tele venture in the domestic market as of now so if you could start yeah uh, we are a ip one company what that means is basically uh, we set up telecom uh, infrastructure in terms of telecom sites so we build those sites and then we lease it uh, back to the operators so that their uh, network capabilities can enhance and increase so uh, basically we give them a, we create a passive infrastructure for them and then they install the active uh, component on that so that they get a quicker uh, uh, network reach in terms of the areas where uh, they are lacking or the quality of service is not there so that is uh, mainly our business model and um, we started this company about uh, it's going to be almost four, almost 4 years now so from scratch and uh, year on year we are doing uh, substantial growth so right now we have close to 400 cell sites i mean to be precise 373 on the ground and rest are uh, on the way of uh, uh, in in uh, work in progress basically uh, we are installing cell sites and these are specifically small cell sites um if you remember earlier they used to be you know the big tower sites you know 30 meter 40 meter 50 yeah. meter but now with the 4g technology and 5g technology coming in the yeah. cell site the, the height of those sites have been decreased because now there are more number of cell sites required because of the high data transmission yeah. so we install this uh, small cell sites which is i mean kind of range in between 9 meters 12 meters 15 meters as in height so yeah this is uh, what we do and uh, within the last 3 years we have managed to expand our uh, reach in uh, about uh, seven states so geographically also we are uh, kind of have a good footprint and now we are uh, increasing the number of sites and increasing our presence in overall geographies okay i yeah. think uh, nicely articulated rahul ji now second question rahul ji i want to understand that in your business uh, you know uh, model and in your particular business of setting up these uh, small towers uh, could you tell us what are the entire range of services which you provide to the customer if you could briefly tell us you know right from the beginning uh, right from the time you get an order what are the various services which you give to the customer to finally uh, you know complete the order basically what happens is the way our uh, overall cycle works um and uh, like an operator they like let, let's say for example we are operating in uh, uh, haryana sector for example right so the operator will share uh, with us their uh, nominal plan nominal plan is the network plan basically that okay in uh, delhi gurgaon noida we plan to have this many number of additional sites and uh, they will share the lat longs with us as to you know where uh, ever they have you know less coverage or that they have a issue with the quality of services so they will share those lat longs with us that they want to install sites on this 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 specific locations so basically that is what operator shares that uh, intelligence with us then our work starts basically then our team goes out they do a site survey basically they do a survey of the specific location then they go and talk to the premises uh, building owners uh, of that specific location and um, they collect minimum uh, three options for the site there so we come back and then we share the same data with operator then operator decides okay which is of p1 p2 p3 whatever they like they they you know finalize that then again our team goes back they do a rental agreement with the uh, this uh, premises owner and from there on then we you know 
uh, start installing the site over there, you know. So we basically, once we have acquired the site, so acquisition is also part of our job. So we acquire that, we do all the agreements, and then we install the uh, passive infrastructure. And then we can again hand it over to the operator for them to install their active equipment. And, you know, the site is completed, basically. That is uh, kind of a cycle. I think very well uh, said again, uh, Rahulji. Now tell me one thing, how much time does it take, uh, you know, for let's say one project to get completed from the time you get the order till the time you complete the tower and give it to the customer? That is point number one. And secondly, Rahulji, you know, we all know that now 5G is coming, already 4G is very prevalent. In, in terms of the market opportunity over the next say, three to four years, you know, in your assessment, what is the kind of growth opportunity for a company like ours? You know, typically, if you could uh, share some data points on the market opportunity side, you know, that would help us understand what kind of growth potential, you know, we have over the next say, three, four years. The, uh, there's a huge uh, growth potential uh, in terms of uh, the overall market size, I would say. Because if you see typically in the last uh, four or five years, the amount of uh, network coverage which was required to happen uh, from different operators, that hasn't happened. And with this uh, new 5G technology coming up, there's a, a lot of focus on the quality of services. And specifically to this one way, when I talk about the small cell deployment, so to give you some uh, rough numbers, uh, currently, there are close to around 1.5 lakh small cell towers uh, installed in the market in India. Whereas the requirement is uh, uh, way about uh, 10 lakh plus uh, small cell sites, which will be further growing. So, because technology will keep on enhancing uh, day to day, you know, day by day, basically. Now we are at 4G, 5G is being deployed, then 6G will come, and so on and so forth. So it is a never ending process, if you ask me. So the overall, if you see the market size or the opportunities, I mean, uh, they are immense, they're ongoing. You know, I cannot okay. say for six months, one year, but it is <laughs> ongoing because everything is digital now, you know? Yeah, and exactly. uh, and it is becoming more and more digital. Everything is being operated by the, you know, through the network. So yeah. if the network is no robust, then nothing can happen, you know? Okay. Rahulji, I was wanting to know what is the kind of time period you take normally to execute an order? Like, you know, normally from the time you get the order till the time the tower is constructed. Roughly, uh, you know, can we say that this is constructed in the next, say, two, two and a half months or it takes slightly longer for you? No, 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 no. no. It, it takes uh, way less than that. Once the nominal plan has been shared, let's say, for example, um, uh, operator has shared a nominal plan with us for a specific area. Uh, let's say, uh, you know, uh, South Bombay. So if I give you an example of Bombay, South Bombay. So let's say they have shared a plan of, uh, they need, you know, 100 odd small cell sites. Yeah. So our teams will go, they start doing the acquisition. Acquisition is the only tough task in this whole process. Yeah. So acquisition yeah. might take one week, 10 days, 15 days. Okay. Uh, so as, as soon as we do acquire the site agreements are done, after that, it is only a, a one week to 10 days process, nothing else, because okay. we just have to do the inflation and commissioning, which okay. doesn't take time at all. Okay, no, understood. Uh, Rahulji, now uh, coming to your customer base, if you could tell us, you know, which are your key customers and within what uh, geographic regions does the company operate? Does it operate only in Maharashtra or does it have a pan-India presence? If you could explain, please. Yeah, uh, our uh, main customer at present is uh, Airtel, Bharti, and that is where all these uh, sites are installed. We have uh, about a month back, we have already signed a MSC agreement with the VIL, Vodafone Idea Limited. We are also in the process of getting the final MSA from BSNL, which should happen any day. And uh, Geo, we are already in discussion. So, I mean, if you see the market, if you see our customer base, which is mainly operators, will be probably the first company who will be covering all operators uh, within our fold. So, okay. so, so that is uh, how we are placed at present. And when it comes to our geographical uh, presence, we are uh, present in about eight states, um, namely Kolkata, West Bengal, Bihar, Jharkhand, uh, Odisha, UP, East, Punjab, uh, Himachal Pradesh, so this is where our sites are at present. 
and we are slowly expanding to other regions as well. As I mean, again, it is uh, more uh, so from the perspective of our customer requirements. Yeah. So that is how we are slowly expanding into other regions as well. Uh, Rahul, you now one more thing I wanted to understand that when you uh, get an order from any of these customers or any new customer, you know, how is the broad pricing decided for your services? Like, is it customized depending on how many towers, what are the services you offer them? Uh, what are the other add-ons which these customers have? So is there any standard package which you have for, you know, specific requirements for customers or is it like a customized package which you devise, you know, looking at the requirements of the customer? No, no, the pricing uh, is uh, all captured in the MSA. Depending on what size of uh, tower we are installing, let's say it's 9 meter has one pricing, then let's say X pricing, uh, 12 meter has X plus uh, 20%, then, you know, so on and so forth. So it, it is all fixed as per uh, those parameters. Only variable component is uh, the actual uh, uh, battery backup usage which again depends on, you know, every site has a different backup. So standard uh, one is like, you know, five kilowatts. And uh, then it increases by, you know, if they take every 250 kilowatts, I will keep on getting uh, additional incremental price. So every price is uh, fixed with all uh, operators within, which is captured in the, uh, captured in the MSC. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, Rauji, in terms of the competitive landscape, you know, in our kind of business product, which you mentioned, uh, are there any other listed peers, you know, which compete with us or, or are there any other private companies which, list, uh, you know, which compete with us? If you could share some names so that we could get a kind of a meaningful peer comparison of our company. Yeah, I will. I mean, if to give you a reference points, uh, there are two uh, major uh, players in uh, uh, the kind of business we are in. Uh, they namely Indus Towers and ATC, American Tire Company. They are the two major players. And uh, rest of the other uh, our competitors are, I mean, they are fairly small size companies. So that is where we want to take the leverage. You know, we want to make this company uh, well, scale up to a level whereby you know it becomes a sizable company because there's a lot of opportunities out in the market which can be captured. So, yeah. Rahul ji, now in terms of uh, differentiation, you know, you, are, you, are, you have been in the business for a long time. You know exactly how, you know, delivery is important in this business. Can you tell us, you know, in terms of qualitative parameters, what is so special about our company? You know, customers like Vodafone, customers like Bharti come to us. Obviously, they are happy with our service and with our delivery capabilities. So just wanted to understand, you know, what could be the competitive mode or maybe how are we, you know, better compared to the other players? In fact, if not, uh, you know, significantly better, at least one step ahead of competition. So any qualitative points which you would like to share that we do our business better than others? Uh, actually, this business works on uh, quality. So what you, I mean, your question has the answer in itself. Why? Because the quality is the most important factor in this whole game. So the uh, operator expects us to give them a 99.9% .9 uptime of the site. These are the parameters. If we go, uh, I mean, if we don't achieve that, then there are penalty clauses, you know, within the agreement. And uh, how we differentiate ourselves is the operations and maintenance of ongoing operations and maintenance of the sites. That is the most important factor, which we have been able to achieve in uh, last two and a half years. And we are uh, very happy and we are uh, proud to say that our 99% uh, of the sites are running uh, as per the customer expected parameters. So, and we have been achieving 99.9% .9 uptime uh, from uh, their perspective because quality of service is the most important factor because they, I mean, network cannot afford to have a downtime. So if the site is down, it directly affects the customers, you know. Understood. Uh, Rahul ji, now coming to the financials, if you could share with us, you know, broadly, what have been the financials for, say, FY23 in terms of revenue and fat? And secondly, uh, you know, now we are, uh, the company is uh, planning to go public. So if you could share with us some basic details, like what is the size of the IPO? What is the objective you're raising money? So if you could please, uh, you know, uh, give us uh, inputs for those, uh, both, both these questions. Yeah, I mean, uh, financial year, uh, uh... Uh, 23 uh, or should i give you this uh, the last quarter ending i think uh, or over 
he was March 23 and maybe the last quarter. Whatever is you know permissible as per you. Yeah, uh, March 23 we closed at about uh, 32 CR overall uh, because we have a subsidiary company uh, as well in uh, Dubai which we had acquired that is also an optical fiber business. So we closed it at 32 CR. Our uh, this year's uh, outlook is we have already uh, done approximately. Uh, seventeen point uh, three CR uh, in the first quarter, and our this year's outlook is to basically reach about eighty CR in uh, revenues uh, for for this year because we already have orders in hand and we have another four hundred sites for which uh, we have got a go ahead from our customers which we will be rolling out uh, in the next four to five months. So the outlook is uh, pretty good in a way, and uh, uh, the overall uh, figures they also look very promising um right now, uh, if i talk about yeah sorry yeah rahul ji i think uh, you know on the uh, ipo if you could share some details you know that is something which we would love to hear from you anything on the objective sure. on the size of the ipo uh, you know for our viewers please yeah i mean the, the size of the ipo is uh, it is uh, 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 we are uh, Basically, coming up with uh, 45 lakhs, uh, basically, shares which are on offer. The IPO size is 25 uh, CR. Um, uh, that is the initial. That is, again, we are not diluting any uh, promoters holding in that. So, this is an additional uh, fresh issue which we are coming up with. And this is, again, uh, mainly required for the expansion purpose as uh, we have a strong outlook uh, from the customer and overall growth perspective. So that is what our uh, overall plan is. And Rahul, we, uh, just now coming on the working capital side of the business, if you could tell me, you know, what is the average working capital cycle in our business? And uh, one interesting thing which I saw in your prospectus is that, you know, there is hardly any inventory in working capital. So, you know, I was just wondering that uh, how do you operate uh, in a business where you don't take any inventory at all in your, you know, in your uh, current assets? So if you could please explain, uh, you know, this to us. Yeah, because see, our uh, we do not we are not our trading company, and uh, we don't need uh, to keep inventory with us because it is more so from the perspective of you know uh, once we get the order, then only we have to you know do the installation of poles, do the installation of battery banks, SMTS system, which are you know uh, we have tie up and they are readily available, so we don't need to keep inventory for ourselves. But yes, the working capital is more so required from the perspective of ongoing operations and maintenance of the business, the salaries have to go, the electricities of uh, every site have to be uh, paid every month on time. So working capital is used more so for that purpose and that perspective. But uh, as such inventories, because we don't need to, because see, uh, the kind of equipment we, we, which we are installing inside, they are battery banks and SMP systems. They come with certain uh, warranty. So as soon as we buy them, the, their warranty period starts. So there's no point keeping an inventory and then if you're installing that after one month, two month, three months, so we are uh, will be losing that. So there's no point doing that. So that is the reason we have uh, almost you know no inventory available except for you know a uh, few uh, kind of uh, batteries and SMP system for which is required for the backup. Uh, nothing else is required. Yeah. And normally, what's the rough working capital cycle, uh, Rahul ji, if you could tell us? Uh, rough working capital cycle, as in you're talking about the turnaround in terms yeah, turnaround. of... Uh, yeah, I think the rough turnaround, you know, by the time you deliver the uh, final yeah. uh, to the customer, yeah. and, you know, yeah. when you get your money. So yeah. roughly that cycle, I wanted to... About, about three months, I would okay. say. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So three months is something so where three... you get your payments, roughly, from the customer. Yeah, yeah, because see, as soon as we do, first of all, um, we once we install the site, as soon as we install the site mm -hmm. within, uh, as per uh, our agreements with the customer, with four to five days, they have to uh, take the, uh, they have to take the handover of the site. So, uh, which means the site is pretty much handed over within the, you know, first 15 to 20 days. And okay. then as soon as the site is handed over, our uh, monthly rental starts. Okay, okay. So with a 30 day payment cycle, so it is kind of overall three months, you know, that is what we are looking at. Yeah. Raul, you know, one thing which I wanted to understand, you know, which I forgot to ask you is that once you set up the tower, you know, all maintenance related services for that tower, do you do uh, annual maintenance services also for these towers, apart from setting up the tower for the client? 
Yeah, no, uh, not annual. We do monthly, you know. I mean, it's an okay. ongoing process. Okay. So we have to make sure there's no issue with regards to the infrastructure which we have provided to the customer. Uh, battery banks are all up and running because, see, power is in our scope. So if there's no power on the site, the site is, it can't work, you know. So, so the battery backups, SMPS systems, and then the electricity, um, overall management of the site in terms of, uh, you know, uh, time to time dealing with the owner of the site, if there's any issue or not. So these are that is all under our scope. No, I understood. I think very clearly uh, articulated by you. Rahulji, now uh, tell me one thing, post-COVID, you know, normalcy has come in and telecom is a very important sector. You know, today we had the World Co Mobile Congress, uh, you know, inaugurated in Delhi, uh, where Mr. Narendra Modi inaugurated it. So, you know, telecom right. is one of the focus sectors for even the government. So, in your sense, can we say over the next, say, four to five years, you know, looking at the kind of growth opportunity we are seeing in digital, uh, in most of these 5G services, which are going to be launched by Bharti as well as Reliance Geo, uh, what is the kind of growth we can assume, you know, typically now this year you said we are expecting a very large, uh, you know, kind of top line growth because of right. a very encouraging order book. But do you see these uh, rates sustainable over the next, say, two to three years, you know, in your sense, in this vertical in which you are operating? Absolutely. It is the demand is going to grow many folds. Why I say that, you see, India is a very big country. Uh, I'm not sure you might have seen or not. A couple of days ago, there was a official statement uh, from uh, Modi ji saying that uh, by uh, 24, just before 24 elections, I want uh, a cell tower in every village, you know. So imagine that uh, this, forget about the quality of service. At present also, we have not reached the 100% uh, uh, coverage. So first motto is to have a coverage. Then you focus on, you know, the improvement and quality of services. And, uh, you know, a good network. I mean, I'm sure if you're living in, anyone living in a metro area, they, we are also suffering here at present. Forget about the rural. In the metro area, so many places, you do not have network. You When you look at your phones, the bars are not there. So that is that is due to the shortage of cell sites, no? And so the scope is huge, you know. And as the technology grows, only difference would be the active uh, component, the box which is installed by the operators, that might change. But you still need the infrastructure, no? Exactly. exactly. Without that, you can't uh, do anything. Yeah, I think absolutely. So, right. so, yeah, so it's a huge scope. So, Rahulji, now uh, one question, you know, from the forthcoming investor side, you all have built a very strong, sustainable business, uh, you know, out of your own efforts. Now, tell me one thing, uh, what would be the message, you, you know, as a promoter, you would like to give the new shareholders, you know, who would be coming in and joining your growth journey, at least in terms of long-term wealth creation. You know, in the short term, uh, obviously, markets are volatile, but in the longer term, as a promoter, how would you actually generate value for these shareholders who are now going to come and, you know, subscribe to your publication? So, any thoughts on this, please? See, uh, uh, first of all, we are uh, in the right industry, uh, ever-growing industry. Uh, telecom is the backbone of uh, uh, digitalization. Uh, without the telecom, without the network, nothing can work. And uh, we started talking about from, you know, uh, when we started our discussion, we started from this point only. Uh, without the network, nothing can happen until unless you have the robust network. And so we are... The good thing about uh, our company and uh, the kind of business we are in, uh, we're in the right area, uh, we're in the right industry, uh, ever-growing industry. Uh, we are kind of uh, attached to the backbone of the, you know, you can, I would say the uh, economy uh, for the country. Why? Because everything is becoming digital now. And where will the digitalization happen? It is the back, we are attached to the backbone, you know. Until unless we support the network, the networks cannot work. So, uh, it is a very, very uh, exciting uh, future for uh, this industry. And uh, the good thing about our company is since we are uh, a growing company, we are uh, the investors coming in will be joining in on the very first level, I would say. So, there's a lot of scope for growth in future. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, there's a upper side uh, to the overall scheme of things. So I think they will have a good uh, experience uh, in future. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, nicely, really nicely articulated by you, Rahulji. Now, last question, Rahulji. 
uh, as every business uh, is, you know, there is always some risk attached to every business. Now, apart from COVID, you know, which was a very abnormal event. Now, in our business, you know, what is the single most risk, which according to you is most important and how, you know, what has been the kind of risk mitigation strategy, which has helped us grow despite, you know, the challenges in the market. So if you could, you know, share your thoughts on this. Uh, risks, I would say, uh, I, I, will, I will say uh, companies like us, most of the time, uh, the best, biggest risk for uh, companies like us is when they are restricted to only uh, one customer. You yeah. know, let's say if they're only operating with uh, ATEL or uh, yeah. any one operator. So that, yes. is, that is the biggest risk for them. So if I talk about the demand, uh, there's a... Uh, a risk of, you know, the demand will decrease, that cannot happen at all, you know. The only risk is when you are working only with one customer. Uh, so that risk we have already mitigated in a way. That is the first thing we did, that we have uh, enrolled ourselves with the, all existing operators and uh, one uh, geo which is left, we are already in discussion with them. So we will have, you know, multiple customers and which uh, further enhances our overall business strategy and mitigates the overall uh, risk as well. Because uh, if tomorrow any operator changes their strategy and uh, you know uh, decides to go south, so at least that mitigation we have covered. So we have multiple options and we'll be working with all of them. Okay. I think uh, very nicely and very articulately again put by you, Raoji. So anyway, Rauji, thank you very much today for sparing your valuable time. In fact, uh, please accept my best wishes to you, your entire management team, and best wishes for your forthcoming IPO. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time as well. Thank you.